I told you all that I would continue to cover the Starliner saga as much as possible, and I'm taking it a step further, and I'll be flying to Florida next month to cover the launch of Crew 10. That's right, your girl got press credentials to the NASA Kennedy Space Center. And so the sooner Crew 10 can get to the ISS, the sooner Butch and Sonny can come home. Now, I tried to cover a crew launch back in 2023 before I broke my femur, and unfortunately it was scrubbed while I was there, and so I was able to get a behind-the-scenes look of the NASA press area, but unfortunately left to come back to Austin for a Tesla event and then, you know, broke my femur. So anyway, this will be my first time actually seeing a crewed launch um, in person from Florida. But I do want to say that trip was completely worth it because although I wasn't able to cover the crude launch, I was able to see your run-of-the-mill Starlink launch, but it was not so routine when I forgot to turn around. So uh, yeah, this has become an internet gem with over a million views from a short that I made. Yeah, if you haven't seen this, check it out. Active movie set behind me, which is pretty cool. Project Artemis is something that they are filming here. So we hopefully will get a little behind the scenes look at that. That is starring Scarlett Johansson and Channing Tatum. No, I have not found them yet. I would like to, cause that'd be cool. But you know, um, and this, this will be cool. It's a uh, film set in the 1960s space race era and it will be released on Apple TV, which some of you seem to indicate you were not a fan of. Oh, wow. Oh my gosh. I'm blind. So anyway, yes, laugh at yourself. It's the best medicine. This to me is so funny that it happened. No, it was not staged. For the people that say it was staged, it was not staged. But I want to, you know, put bloopers out there because I think that that is like some of the best parts of anything being done live. So I just wanted to make that little personal announcement because I'm really excited to bring you guys in person coverage and head back to Orlando. I haven't been there since last year when I flew zero G for the first time. And so it'll be nice to be a part of the actual official media there. But let's talk about the Crew 10 launch and why it's so important. And yes, it does relate to the Starliner saga. It's all about the handoff. The ISS needs a crew to keep things running, experiments, maintenance, you name it. Crew 10 is the next team scheduled to head up there and they're launching no earlier than March 12th aboard a SpaceX Crew Dragon called Endurance. Once they dock, they'll overlap with Butch, Sonny, and the Crew-9 team for a short handover period. Then Butch and Sonny can hop aboard the Crew-9 Dragon with their buddies Nick and Alexander and finally head back to Earth, splashing down off the coast of Florida around mid-March. Which, by the way, speaking of Crew Dragon splashdowns, the first West Coast splashdown is expected to occur with Crew 10. That's the launch that I'll be covering, and of course, they'll be up there for some time before they come back down to Earth, but that should be pretty exciting. Apparently, SpaceX is making this change, moving to the Pacific Ocean to reduce the risk of debris landing in populated areas. But Crew 9 will be splashing down off the coast of Florida. And so remember, by the time that Butch and Sonny come home, they will have stayed up at the ISS for nine months. They were originally supposed to be there for eight days, and they were supposed to come back this month, February 2025, but SpaceX needed extra time to prep a brand new Crew Dragon for Crew 10, pushing everything back to late March, but NASA recently switched gears, deciding to use the already proven Endurance capsule instead, which is a smart move. And that did speed things up by a couple of weeks, meaning Butch and Sonny get to come home sooner than the late March, early April plan. And this is something that Elon said that they were going to work to do. And so even though it's only a few weeks difference, they are coming home apparently sooner. We're gonna help rescue next month two astronauts that I think were abandoned. They, they dispute that in an interview. When at the, you, at the, at the, at the president's re request we, we, or instruction, we 
uh, are accelerating the return of the astronauts, uh, which was postponed kind of to a ridiculous degree. They um, got left in space. They, they've been there, they were supposed to be there eight days, they're there almost 300. Biden. They were put, yeah. yes, they were left up there for political reasons, which is not good. Okay, it's not good. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about the sponsor of this video, Delete Me. Hey, did you know that about four years ago, I started Ellie in Space? It has been such an amazing ride, and I can't believe that the channel is at almost 200,000 subscribers. And I've met some amazing people on the internet over the years just working on my channel. But the longer that I've been on the internet, I realize that some people don't always have the best intentions, which is why I wanna keep my information safe, like my phone number, my address and personal data. But luckily there's a way to do that and it won't require much of your effort if you use Delete Me. I've been working with Delete Me for a year now and they've really saved me a lot of time and helped keep my information safe on the internet. So let's do a year in review. Over the last year, they've reviewed 137 data brokers and found that 88 of those data brokers had my information. They've reviewed almost 35,000 listings, saving me a lot of time, and that's because when they find my information, they submit an opt-out request so that that information has to be removed from the internet. So Delete Me runs several reports throughout the year, and they just completed one this month. So these privacy reports show you each of the data brokers they've scanned, what they found, and what they're doing to remove my data. And this doesn't just apply to me. You probably have some information on the internet that you may not know is out there. And this is why a membership is so beneficial because Delete Me works year round to keep your information safe. I personally trust Delete Me and feel so much more secure knowing that my personal information won't be subjected to threats of harassment, identity theft, or even stalking. You can get 20% off Delete Me U.S. consumer plans when you go to joindeleteme.com slash LA20 and use promo code LA20 at checkout. That's joindeleteme.com slash LA20, code LA20. Thanks, Delete Me, for sponsoring this video. So that's why I feel so compelled to go cover the Crew 10 launch in particular. It isn't just another launch. It's the key to wrapping up an epic chapter for Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams. After over 250 days in space, they're finally coming home, fingers crossed, thanks to SpaceX and some clever teamwork at NASA. And by the way, Crew 9 contributed to hundreds of scientific experiments, including swabbing the station's exterior for microbes, printing 3D medical devices, and studying how moisture, orbital altitude, and ultraviolet light affect plant growth. So I'm not exactly sure how short that short handover period will be and how many days in between the uh, anticipated launch of Crew 10 on March 12th that Butch and Sonny will actually be able to leave. But of course, I will keep you notified of that. And I'm, again, very excited to cover this in person. And here's another announcement. I, of course, am planning on covering Starship Flight 8. I'll be heading down to Starbase on Thursday, February 27th, and I'll be streaming from the roof of Margaritaville again with some amazing high-powered cameras like I did last time. Hopefully we won't blow out the mics screaming into them during the actual launch this time. I will keep that in mind, but get ready for some more incredible footage and something else that's really worth noting and that is likely to be different about this launch is it looks like SpaceX will be foregoing a wet dress rehearsal. It's looking like we'll see a full stack on Thursday, so probably just in time when I get there. But if SpaceX does actually enter the countdown and launch on Friday like they are intending to, there will be no full stack tanking tests or wet dress rehearsals, and that'll be a first for a Starship launch to not have a wet dress rehearsal. I made a video about this and it's received many views, but it also seems there's some confusion about why I put wet dress in the title. Hmm, well in rockets, wet versus dry means fueled versus empty. So there are some practice countdowns with the rocket empty, but the wet dress rehearsal includes actual rocket fuel, making it both more realistic and more dangerous. The wet dress rehearsal is typically the last one before launch. Of course, dress rehearsal originates to the early days of theater, where you rehearse the play first in regular street clothes to learn the lines. But as the actual performance approaches, you put on costumes and do a full dress rehearsal. Hopefully this
this explains why my dress is not wet in the thumbnail. And this is exactly SpaceX's goal to have pad flow processing cadence improvements. So they want to make this a rapidly reusable vehicle and have less and less time in between launches. So, so I feel like this is really significant and just something that I didn't mention in my last video. And I hope that everything does go according to plan and that they don't have another unfortunate rapid unscheduled disassembly like we saw with ship 33. But I'm really rooting for them and I feel like they will actually have a very successful flight and hopefully get us one step closer to a potential return of not only the booster to the launch site, but also the ship. And SpaceX is even possibly going to try to do that on Flight 9, which kind of blows my mind, but we'll see if they'll be able to pull it off. But I just wanted to make that announcement. Again, if you appreciate my coverage, please consider checking out my Patreon and offering your support there or also a channel membership. Again, this is my full-time job and I don't try to mention it too often, but sometimes the expenses of these trips stack up and I really just want to be everywhere I can be um, when possible to cover this stuff for you guys and bring you a different look. So thank you so much for supporting my channel. As always, I'll see you in the next video. Make sure to subscribe to Ellie in Space and I, I will see you for the Starship launch.